In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you all the skills and techniques needed to get your Space Marines finished and painted from the Warhammer starter sets. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name is Michael and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to finish your Space Marines from the 40k starter set. So this tutorial is a continuation from my getting started with 40k video, where I showed you how to get your Space Marines built and painted, ready for using on the tabletop. I now want to show you how to get them finished and the techniques and skills you need so you can continue to paint even more Space Marines and grow your collection. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below and if you want to help support what I do you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you and I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. I would especially like to say a massive thank you to Matt Dennett who has recently become my latest patron. It really does make a difference. So I'm going to be showing you how to paint all the Space Marines in a certain order so you can gradually get to grips with everything I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial. And eventually by the time you finish painting all your Space Marines, you will have the confidence enough to go away and paint any other units you want to add to your collection. Our Space Marines are already built and should already have some base colours on them, which I showed you how to do in my Getting Started Before 40k video. So let's quickly go over what I've already done with our Space Marines, so you know you're ready to carry on with this tutorial. First we undercoated everything using McCrag Blue Spray. We then painted McCrag Blue from the pot as the McCrag Blue from the spray is a bit different. After that was done we picked out all the details using Lead Belcher, Retributor Armour, Abaddon Black, Corax White, Mephiston Red and Bugman's Glow for any flesh. I am using additional paints and brushes on top of what you get in the paints and tool set. But again I've been very careful in my choice of colours and only picked the essential ones that I think you'll need and ones that you'll probably find yourself using often. In the paint set we didn't get any kind of brown colour so I want to start off by painting all the belts and pouches on our ultramarines using some Mornfang brown. You can leave them black though if you wanted to. I just like having that extra colour on our marines and it makes it easier to pick out those details against everything else. Whilst painting, remember to thin your paints and paint in multiple thin layers so we don't lose any detail on our miniatures. Once we finish doing that, we have all our base colours down and we can start creating some definition. In this section, I'll be going over creating definition and how we can use the shades in different ways. Even though our ultramarines have been painted and have lots of colours on them, they're looking very flat and this is because they have no definition. Definition is created to bring out all the details on our miniatures, making them look less flat and more interesting to look at. And there is two really easy ways to do this. The first way is to simply apply some shade to an area. Let's first use some Agrax Earth shade on all the belts and pouches we just painted. Apply this so the shade comfortably covers these details as we don't want the shade to pull too much in those areas. Any excess can be removed though using your brush. Once the shade is dried you can see where it's settled, it's a lot darker than the more flatter areas giving us that definition. The whole idea when it comes to painting is to simply make it look like our miniatures could exist in the real world. And we can do this by mimicking the way light would interact with them, creating shadows and highlights. Let's now use the same thing for all the silver and gold, using different coloured shades to get different tones and variation. For all the silver details like the details on the weapons and backpacks, let's use some Norn Oil. And for any details that are gold, like the chest decoration and shoulder pad trims, we want to use Reichland Flesh Shade. Using different coloured shades really helps to create more variety and interest on our miniatures. So that's one way of creating definition, but applying a shade all over our blue ultramarine armour is really going to darken it, which we don't want. What we can do instead is a recess shade. I'm using Norn Oil, and we want to be more precise with it, applying it into all the recesses and around any details of the armour 
where we want that definition. Applying the shade in this way lets us keep that vibrant blue we expect from ultramarines. Once the shade is dried, you can use some Macrag Blue to neaten up any areas and mistakes if you've been messy like me. So you should be able to go away and do some shading and recess shading for yourself. I tend to use an all over shade when it comes to more organic details such as flesh and cloth, whereas I like to do a recess shade when it comes to more industrially made equipment that has more flatter areas such as armour. Now we've learned how to create definition on our miniatures, we can see the details on our Space Marines better. The next thing we can do to bring out all those features and details even more is to highlight. In this section I want to show you how we can create some highlights and the best way to do them. When something is lit or a light is shone on it, we can see the details and areas more easily where that light hits an object. Let's see how we can replicate this on our miniatures. The first way we can do this is simply by working up to a lighter colour on the raised areas and detail. I'm using Mornfang Brown again on our belts and pouches, but this time I'm only painting it on the raised detail, so we can still see the shade which has given us that definition. Next use some pink Cora and paint the raised detail on the wax part of the purity seals as well as using it to paint all the ridges of chainsaw handles and handlebars on the bikes. The other way of highlighting is to highlight all the edges of details and features. Now this is a tricky thing to do, but let me show you as a beginner how you can do this with a dry brush. So we've learned about dry brushing when painting the Necrons in the getting started video, but we don't want to be so heavy with it and have a bit more control for our space marines. Let's use a small dry brush this time so we can be more precise with the dry brushing. And just like before, remove as much of the paint as you can until it's no longer coming off onto the paper towel. Let's dry brush the bolter and chainsaw casings. The colour we're using is Dawnstone and we want to build this up slowly, making sure to only get the edges. Being more intentional with the dry brush we can get some highlights on details easily. Now you've had a little practice with it. Let's work on highlighting the power armour and the paint I'm using is Calgar Blue. You don't need to get every edge, just make sure to take your time trying to be as neat as you can with it. Remember it's better to build up the highlights slowly until you're happy with the result. I would always say it's worth having a go at highlighting your miniatures because it really does make a difference. Now you could carry on and use the dry brushing method to highlight all your space marines but I do want to show you the more traditional way of highlighting and the best way I can show you how to do this is with the Outriders. So you can see I've painted the Outrider Marines the same way I've painted the Assault Intercessor Marines. But because the bikes are so blocky, they give us a great opportunity to learn and practice how to edge highlight. Let's get ready to highlight with our small layer brush. Using Calgar Blue, let's thin this down on our palette first of all. And for highlighting, I only use a small amount of water this time. We then want to remove some of the paint from our brush on some paper towel. This is going to give us more control and prevent painting thick blobby lines which we don't want. When painting highlights the easiest and quickest way to paint them is with the side of your brush. First angle your brush against an edge and run the brush along it to create the highlight. Go around the bike edges and do this for as many edges as you can. For the edges you can't do this. Just take your time painting thin lines along the edges to create that highlight. And remember removing that excess paint first will give us thinner, crispier lines. Just take your time, there's no rush and for any lines that we're not completely happy with, we can neaten them up with some Macrag Blue. Hopefully you can see that painting your highlights is achievable even as a beginner. Just give it a go and if you do struggle you can always just stick to the dry brush method. Now you know some different ways of highlighting, we can get our Assault Intercessors finished. We can highlight the gold details using Runefang Steel. I dry brushed this first on the chest decoration and then edge highlighted the shoulder pad trim. The red helmet I highlighted with Wild Rider Red. You can either edge highlight this or dry brush, it's up to you. The last thing I want to show you on the Assault Intercessors is how to finish painting all the purity seals. This is easily done using some Skeleton Hall Contrast. 
Apply this to the paper part of the purity seal and you want to try and apply this in one even thin coat. With the salt intercessors painted, you should now feel more confident and comfortable, so let's now move on to finishing the outriders. In this section, let me show you how to get your outriders painted. We can paint the riders how we painted our assault intercessors, and we've already went through highlighting the actual bike, so there's only a few details left to get done. For the tyres, we can dry brush them using Dawnstone, just like we did earlier on the weapon casings. We can make them more interesting than this though. Using Mornfang Brown, we can thin this down and paint it into all the recessed areas, similar to how we recess shaded the armour. Once this is dried, it should look like there is a build up of dirt and mud in the tyres. Let's work on the bike exhaust next by applying some Agraxa shade all over the exhaust and a little way up the pipes that go into them. Once the Agraxa shade is dried, apply some Reichland Flesh shade, but only going about two thirds of the way along the exhaust. And once that's dried, apply some Norn Oil just on the last third of the exhaust. This is going to give some cool tonal variation you might expect to see, and it just makes things look more interesting. Finish the exhaust using Runefang Steel to highlight the edges. For the bike's console, Dawnstone can again be used to highlight the black casing using the method you prefer. For the screen, let's use some Warpstone Glow, making sure we get a nice solid colour. When you've done that, we can highlight the edges of the screen using Moot Green. With the console done, you should now be able to get your Outriders finished. But before we move on to the captain, you'll also need to know how to paint Space Marines without helmets. I still have no idea why a Space Marine just wouldn't wear a helmet to battle. You should have already painted these areas using Bugman's Glow, like I showed you in the Getting Started with 40k video. So now what you want to do is mix an equal amount of Kislev Flesh to the Bugman's Glow and paint this on the raised features and details of the head. Finish the head by highlighting the details you want more prominent using Kids Left Flesh. You can get fancier doing flesh, but this is a nice simple and easy way to do it that anyone can achieve and still look good. Now I want to go through some of the things you may need to know to get your Primaris Captain painted. So with everything I've shown you in this tutorial, you should be able to get most of the Primaris Captain painted on your own. So I've chosen to edge highlight my Captain, but again you can just use the dry brush method to highlight areas instead if you prefer. Let me now show you how to paint some of the details you may not be able to do on your own. For the robes, let's keep it simple and start with a base colour of Yushabti Bone, and paint thin lines on the raised folds using Screaming School to highlight. To create the dirt you can see at the bottom of the cloth you can see in the pictures, first use some skeleton horde contrast towards the bottom of the robe and stipple this on using your brush to give that random splatter look. Once this is dried repeat this process using some Agrax Earth shade but even lower on the robes this time. To paint the skeleton on the captain's shield let's create a dirty bone look by thinning Agrax Earth shade first of all with an equal amount of water and applying this all over the skeleton. The water just weakens the strength of the shade so it's not as strong. Finish the skeleton by painting the raised areas and details using your Shabti Bone. All the parchment and purity seals can be finished with an edge highlight using Screaming Skull and I've highlighted the sword using Runefang Steel. Now to finish painting the captain, I've used Athematic Blue Contrast and applied this all over the power nodes on the power sword and also in the recesses of the skeleton. Using the Athematic Blue gives the impression that these areas are radiating with energy, creating yet more interest on our miniatures. We've now gone through the whole process of getting all the Ultramarines fully painted, but I want to finish this tutorial showing you how to apply transfers and get their bases done. In this final section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to apply some transfers and do their bases. 
In the command box you get a sheet of transfers. They have a choice of iconography to choose from depending on how you paint your marines. For our ultramarines we're mainly going to be using these designs at the top of the sheet. It's really up to you if you want to use the transfers. They are quite tricky to do and you can always come back to them later when you're feeling more confident in the hobby. Let's start by separating out all the transfers we're going to be using on our ultramarines. You can use a craft knife or scissors. To remove the transfer from the backing sheet, soak the transfers in some water and let them sit and after a few minutes you should be able to slide the transfer around which means they're ready to lift off and use. First wet the area with some water. Then place the transfer onto that area and the water should make it easier to slide the transfer around until it's in position. And once you're happy with the position of the transfer, just let it fully dry before doing anything else. If you find it isn't sitting properly on the more awkward areas, you can make little cuts into it to help it sit better. Once it has dried for the first time, use a wet cotton bud and using a rolling motion over the transfer we can press it down into place. We can apply transfers over transfers as well for extra detail. Just make sure you've finished applying the transfer underneath before you do this. I love transfers because they're such a great way to easily add extra details without having to paint them. Now you know how to apply transfers, we can finish our ultramarines by getting their bases done. To do the bases we're going to be using Astro Granite which is a technical paint. It's great to use on bases because when it dries it has this texture to it that gives the impression of dirt or an area of ground. To apply it we can use this texture spreader. Take some of the Astro Granite straight from the pot using the big scoop. We can then spread it around using the smaller end being more precise with it. For the captain, because he has a detailed base already, let's get this painted using Dawnstone. When the Astro Granite has dried, you'll be able to see the texture it's created. But we can take this a step further and create definition and highlights on our bases as well. First apply some Norn Oil over the dried Astro Granite. And we also want to apply the Norn Oil all over the captain's base as well. Once the Norn Oil has fully dried, Let's give all our bases a light dry brush using Screaming Skull. Finally, let's tidy up the bases by painting the rim. I'm using Dawnstone here, but you could use a bad and black or another colour of your choice. With that done, you should be able to get your own Ultramarines finished. Just remember to take your time and have fun. You should also be able to use the same techniques and methods to paint any other units you want to add to your collection. So let's see how these Ultramarines turned out. Our Space Marines are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and get your own painted. I've made a playlist of all the other tutorials on the channel that I think will be useful to you so make sure to go and check those out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.